Alright, so this game is hard. Like, actually, genuinely, truly hard. So I was watching this video by Foco, where he was talking about Splunky 1, and how it is such a perfect game. And then like after 8 years, Splunky 2 got released, and it was better than the first one, literally in every aspect. Oh, and apparently you can finish the game within 30-ish hours, which is I guess the average amount of time needed to finish a like like game. So why the f*** can't I finish this goddamn game? <laughs> so in this funny little cartoony platformer game, you play as Anna Splunky. Oh look, that's the name of the game, get it? And you start in this desert looking area that is called Dwelling. So what can you do in this game, you might ask? Well, you can whip and throw. Yeah, that's the whole game. Just kidding, there is also death and death and death. You can fall into spikes and die. You can explode and die. You can teleport into a wall and die. Isn't that exciting? Now let's talk about the mechanics of the game. You have movement, you have combat, and you have bombs and ropes that can be used for movement and combat. Hell yeah! These things may look simple, which is true. I mean, they are easy to learn, but as every good game mechanic go, they are hard to master. With these few mechanics, there are many clever moves you can do that can help you get past the problem you are facing. I'm sure there are many people who will call the mechanics of this game basically unfair, which I can totally understand why. Simply put, it is a very punishing game. You have a very low amount of health and resources to begin with, and if you don't do what you have planned in your head right, the game will smack you in the ass until you die. But with every death that I have in this game, I always see what did I do wrong that led me into that situation? Which kind of helps me to not do that mistake again? Well, not always. <clears throat> There's only one thing that I really don't like, and that is the stun time. When you get stunned, you have to wait and just hope for the best that you'll survive a random projectile or an enemy to not kill you. What about your goal? For now, your goal as Anna is to get past each level and area to finally beat the final boss and find your parents. I like how Anna's father, who is the protagonist of Splunky 1, is just named Guy. Like any other character in this game has a name, but a character that is the part of the main story? Nah, let's just call him Guy, like who cares? Now let's talk about the art of the game. Visually speaking, it is alright. Definitely it's not headed towards a unique art style with crazy atmospheric vibes and details. It's just simple and cute. But if you look at Splunky 1 and then compare it to Splunky 2, you'll see how much they've nailed improving and polishing the visuals. Music and sound design are not my thing to talk about, but I can tell you that they're good. Something that always gets me is the intro music. Like you just launched the game and started playing the first level and there's this beautiful tune playing in the background like a bright sunlight blinding your eyes somehow in a good way though unless you die before it finishes the lore i think i should have talked about this in the your gold section but the thing is yes the game apart from the goal that i just told you has some other sort of stories and lore although i haven't looked it up because first i don't really think it is that deep and second i don't really care anyway at this point i mean after so many failed attempts and hours that i put into this game i finally got the normal ending that i wanted and the only thing that is keeping me going on this journey is, is this, this video, video that i made now that you're watching this it means i don't have to deal with this game anymore <laughs> i can finally delete my 11 month old footage <laughs> Mysteries and secrets. Yeah, I should have put all of this stuff into one section, but you watched this much already, so... While you're playing and exploring each level, you'll come across some random stuff that'll make you wonder like, what's that old man guarding over there? I wonder what this eye thing he does. I wonder what will happen if I take a cute little picture of this old woman. Don't do that by the way, I warn you. I wonder what can I do with that... Hey, is that a dog? Dog! There is also this poor little dog in each level that you can throw around and beat the sh** out of it. Hmm, should I tell you what's the use of it? Nah, you'll figure it out. The ghost. Oh, shit! And the butt. You have to make choices and can't just wander around in a level forever. After you spend more than 3 minutes in a level, a deadly, unkillable ghost will spawn and start chasing you down. The moment she touches you, you instantly die and vaporize. Ghost spots will appear in each level and contain a good amount of money, but if you break the pot, you will immediately summon the ghost and have to pack your stuff and run away. Well, you can just bring the pot to the end and grab the money before leaving the level. So either do that or just ignore it, right? Well, yeah, but there is also a chance that you know, one of the same reasons that my random Mikachu kill happened to the pot and triggered the ghost as if you broke it. Like, come on, that's just cruelty. And sometimes you might want to just speed through a level and be happy with the pot money, even if it breaks early. There is also your journal book. It summarizes your current run and includes information about everything you've seen so far. It's a useful thing. 
the online experience. Oh, I just played a few games online with the randoms because I have no friends and they are try hard as hell. Speedrunning each level and unlocking achievements and shits for you. As I realized I was missing the things that were just getting added to my journal that I haven't even encountered yet, I stopped playing multiplayer and stuck to my solo adventures. Although I think if you and your friends start the game at the same time, you'll have a great time exploring this mysterious world together. Alright, I hope I made you interested enough to give this game a try. And suffer, look how I do it! And here are some free tips for you. The game has an instant restart button that you can enable in the settings. I don't know why it's not enabled by default, but trust me, enabling it will save you a lot of time. There are many advanced techniques that you can look up and learn, but backweeping is one of the coolest and more useful ones out there. So, uh, go learn that. Throw stuff on this place which is called Kali Altar and you'll get something amazing in return later. The dog's name is Monty by the way, but you might see two other pets in the gameplay of other people and that's because you can go to the settings and switch Monty for a cat or a hamster. And lastly, f*** those old shopkeepers man, I f*** them. The things that I just said barely scratches the surface of the things that you learn and understand about the world of this game. There are a lot of things that I haven't talked about for you to see yourself, and there are many things that even I don't know about this game. This is just the start of my YouTube channel, I mean the commentary style videos. So if you'd like to see more of these videos, please do me a favor and subscribe. Thanks! Hey, did I mention that you can die in this game?